I've had plenty of questions regarding my home recording setup and how I go about demoing ideas, as well as people asking me what they should buy, what DAW they should use, which interface they should use, and basically how can they set themselves up to record at home. So I wanted to give you guys a very brief overview of how I demo musical ideas. So the whole idea here is that I don't want to show you guys how I go about like actually writing songs or how I go about, you know, all the extra stuff that goes into it where I basically do a lot of pre-production here. I just want to show you how I go from a simple idea or a simple riff and how I capture it using the gear that I've got sitting around. So most of the time when I'm jamming at home, I'm probably playing this guitar. This is my PRS AC2. SC245, uh, which I love. And then I've got my Axe FX3 set up. It's going to my UAD Apollo Twin. I've got some Atom A7X monitors hooked up and that all goes into Pro Tools. So a lot of the time I just sit here and play with the Axe FX uh, at home because it means if I need to turn down or if it's late at night or anything like that, I can still get the same tones. And if I want to turn it up loud, the Atoms really push. So that's pretty cool. It's also a great system for dialing in tones for gigs because I find the... Uh, Tones that I dial in on the Atoms translate really well to a gig situation. However, we're here to talk about recording. So if I'm sitting here and I'm jamming away on guitar and I play a riff that I really like, I want to be able to record it straight away. And we're recording a new Ragdoll album at the moment. And I think, uh, let me show you guys on the screen if, here we, well, I've got it here. Uh, these are all just the ideas that I had. I think there's 60 little songs or something like that. You can see some of them are like a minute long and some are like, you know, fully fleshed out four minute demos. Uh, but the big advantage of this setup is when I have an idea, I can capture it really quickly. So I'm sitting here playing this guitar and, you know, I might play a riff. <laughs> Be like, hey, that's pretty cool. I want to record it. So everything's already set up. All I have to do is open Pro Tools, which I've got now. And oh, I should also say very quickly, the UAD software, you can see my voice running in here. Uh, for my voice, I'm just using this stock little channel strip thing that they've got as a free plugin. Um, I am using a Behringer ADAT to get some extra inputs. But what I've got going on over here is channel one in the UAD is coming from output three of the Axe FX3, which is just set to mirror input one. So this is the always on DI. I obviously have that muted because I don't need to hear it, but it is handy if I do uh, like a performance that I do and I want to go back and reamp it. And it's handy for like moving things around and editing. And then through channel number two, I've just got the guitar. So you can see that there. <laughs> And I'm not playing around with any of the Unison plugins or anything like that. This is just straight in from the XFX3 to the UAD. Uh, the reason I've got it set up like that and the reason I'm not just using the X3 at the moment is so that I can use X Edit on my Mac. I believe there's an issue with X Edit and Mac and something like that when you're using the software. So hopefully they'll fix that at some point and I can just do stuff through the X3. But it is, it is also nice having other inputs set up as well. So that is what's going on with the UAD and the Fractal. Uh, on the Fractal, I'm just using, what is this, the Ubershal and the Atomica. This is sort of my main recording preset that I dialed in. I'm pretty happy with it. So that's always a good start. And then in Pro Tools, let me show you guys the kind of uh, recording demo template I've got set up. Basically, I've got uh, two tracks of guitars because I always like to double track guitars on demos just to give you a better, you know, even though it might be a quick idea, it does sound more finished with double track guitars. And then I've got the individual DIs. I have got each uh, track and its DI grouped together over here. So if I am moving things around or reamping or editing, it's really easy to do that. I've got a bass track in there. I've got drums, which I'm using Stephen Slate SSD4, which sounds amazing. I think they bring out SSD5, which I'll probably just buy because I like this plugin so much. Uh, hopefully SSD5 has some cool new stuff and more sounds. And uh, I'm just using a user kit here. This is just my demo kit, uh, which has, if we have a look, it's essentially... Uh, in SSD, you can edit the instrument. It's pretty much the stock CLA kit with a couple of different, like I've got a different kick and I think I changed the snare out or something like that, like very minor tweaks. I find the SSD presets are really good. I just went through till I found one that I liked and I love Chris Lord Algae's mixing and this drum kit sounds really, really good. Uh, if we have a look at the drum mixer, one thing that I really like to do with these is I've got a couple of different rooms that I can use. So I like basically taking the stock setting, like whatever it is, say here, uh, what is that, room B, and just turn it up 
by like three to four dB. And I find that gives you more of a realistic kind of drum sound. Uh, if I audition it with a groove, let's say, uh, I don't know, any of these. I want that to loop. That would be awesome if it could do that. I better put it on loop. There we go. That's enough of that. Uh, yeah, I was using the wrong room. My bad. But you can hear when you turn the rooms up immediately, uh, it just starts to sound a little bit more like a real drum kit, which I like when I'm doing these demos. So SSD4 is handling all the drum programming stuff. And on each guitar track, I've just got this saved as a preset. All I've got, it's just this stock Waves Q4. But all I'm doing is pulling out a little bit of 3300 and 5500 with like a super high Q. Hardcore Music Studio on YouTube has a really good tutorial about EQing heavy guitar and I found this is really, really good. So I'll link their video in the video description. And I just use these as a starting point and move them around depending on the sound I'm going for. The idea there is that before I go and EQ anything on the demo, that's just taking out any sort of harsh frequencies you get from close mic guitars. And I use this on just about like everything, whether I'm miking a real cab or I'm using the Axe FX or the AX8 or plugins, uh, it all goes through that kind of preset EQ because I love the way it sounds. And then the guitars are all going to this guitar bus down here, which I'm just using this Sheps Omni plugin, which yeah, get it. It's really, really good. Probably the best Waves plugin because it replaces a channel strip, a gate, a DS, an EQ, and a compressor, and it's got a limiter. So it's super flexible, super handy. You can also move these around uh, wherever you want them, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think you just pick them up and do that, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's the Waves Sheps Omni. I think I got that for like 29 bucks or something. So that was a good little investment. And then that will just let me you know, make some surgical cuts to the guitars to make them sit in the demo a little bit better when I want to do that, as well as some cool preamp simulation. I've also got that running on the bass track. And I'm running bass through the Axe FX as well because some really great bass sounds in there. And yeah, other than that, I'm running a little bit of reverb uh, using this uh, Sound Toys little plate. The Sound Toys plugins are like probably the best money I've spent on plugins, even though this little plate was free when I got it. I've got their suite. So anytime I want to like add delay to something, the Echo Boy plugin's amazing. Um, the Crystallizer, there's so many cool things, so many creative tools that they make. But the reverb is my bread and butter. And I just mix a little bit of that in onto the guitars. Again, just because I like the way it sounds, I do want my demos to at least sound listenable, not just be like a scratchy kind of thing like that. And then on the Master Bus, uh, this goes to show how cheap I am. I'm using this Massey L2007 limiter, which is just a demo version. I really should pay for this just just so I can leave it on. And uh, the demo version is great. All I do is just uh, turn the threshold until it just starts to give me a little bit of gain reduction. Um, and that's good for when I'm doing a final bounce just to make everything uniform in volume. So that's the setup. I'm going to show you guys how I go about sort of putting together a little track. Uh, that riff I played before was pretty cool. So what I would do is go through and I'll tap the tempo on my keyboard. So what was it? Somewhere in the 130, 135s. Let's go 135. Uh, that's where it was before. So, And then what I would do is just very quickly get in and program a drum groove using the MIDI editor. So I'll give myself a count in with the hats. And that riff, one, two, three, four, uh, starts on, on an anticipation. So I'll put a kick drum there with a crash. That'll do the trick.
So I normally start with just a super simple drum groove. What I'll do is record the guitar riff and then I can go back later and tweak the drums and then re-record the guitar riff because I really like the way that a guitar riff and a drum groove interact to give you something pretty cool. So, so far we've got this. And I'm super lazy, so I'm just gonna copy and paste that. I'll use Command D in Pro Tools and I'll just make a big loop of drums. Beautiful. Then I can go through and actually track an idea. So I'm going to go through and track that riff a few times and I can copy and paste it later on if I want. But for now, I'll just go through and do that. So it's going to sound like this. And as you can see, rookie mistake, I've got the DI going through here. So I need to assign these properly. These need to be number two, and then these need to be number one down here. And I better record the DI as well. This, ah, no matter how many times I do this, <laughs> I always, always come up with the same mistake. So anyway, let's try again. Made a little mistake with the riff, so I'll do it again. Then if I'm happy with that, I would go and double track that idea. I will turn this guitar track on. I'll leave the DI muted. I think I've got everything lined up properly. This should go down pretty easily. Wasn't even holding onto my pick properly. Okay, there's my double track guitar riff. I can now have a listen to it and start to get an idea for what the track's gonna sound like. As soon as I hear a double track heavy guitar riff, I get pretty excited. Wicked, what I'm gonna do now is very quickly play some bass. So I'll bring up my bass preset on the X3, which uh, where is it? I'll use this one here. All right, and hopefully there's a bass somewhere here. There we go, Ryan left his P bass. Uh, let's see, I better just check that it's in tune. There we go, all righty. I'm gonna do bass now. I really should record a bass DI, but uh, for the sake of this, I will not. Here we go, I'll put some bass on it. There we go, we've got bass on the track now, and this, I can finally start to get an idea of what it sounds like. I will just bring the guitars down a little bit, normally take them down to about minus three, and bring the bass down a little bit, just so it sounds kind of mixed-ish. And normally this is enough, normally this would kind of get me to where I need to be, where I can just flick an idea, uh, you know, do a bounce and remember it later if I'm in a rush, or then really start to get into the creative process and go, okay, I've got a riff, where can I take it? What other sections do I want to do in the song? So let's do that. Let's have a listen. Cool. All I would do then very quickly is uh, a little bit of guitar EQ. I'll I don't have any high or low pass going on in the Axe 3 for my recording presets. So what I'll do is I can, it's nice because I can do it here in the DAW. So I'll just do that, uh, sort of give it a high pass somewhere around there, add a little bit of saturation and it sounds like this.
And then all I would have to go through is kind of level this out a little bit more. Uh, and same thing, do a little bit of like tweaking to the bass guitar. Uh, all I would do to the bass is add some more saturation. I like dirty bass, so I might slam that a little bit. And then I would just add a bunch of like compression. So really make it kind of squishy. And that's pretty much it. That's that's like enough to record a demo for me. Like I said, I would probably go on and uh, work more on the musical ideas at this stage until I kind of finish the idea and really flesh it out. And then I would go through and tweak all the EQ and try to get it to sit in a mix and uh, bounce it off and send off a quick mix to the other guys in the band. But hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the sort of workflow that I've got going on. Uh, it's super easy. These, I mean, it's just insane that you can get something like that that sounds so good so quickly with a couple of free plugins, an interface, uh, a modeler, and like a guitar and a bass. So I will... Uh, put up any links that I mentioned. I think I mentioned the Hardcore Music Studio tutorial for heavy guitars. That one was really good. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to see all the other Axe 3 content and stuff like that. And if you like this type of video and you want to see some more like this, uh, kind of for, I guess, you know, I'm not a mix engineer. I'm not a like studio producer guy. I'm a guitar player who writes music. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there who are like that as well. You just want to get decent sounding demos. You don't want to change the world with your demos. You just want them to sound okay. And uh, it is super easy to do this. So start with a template like this. Uh, have everything that's going in, you know, the best quality that you can and uh, enjoy the process of making music. I will see you guys around.